Hello. In this problem, steam is cooling down in a rigid tank. And we are supposed to find the amount of heat that is lost and the entropy that is generated in the system's universe. So suppose we draw a boundary around the tank. And what is given is the initial condition of the steam. And also is given the surrounding temperature is being 30 degrees Celsius. We have to find the amount of heat that is lost and entropy generation. As you can see, this is a problem involving a closed process. In a closed process, a system goes from a, a definite beginning state to a final state. And that's what we see in this case. And it's a, it's a, it's a uniform system because at any given time, the system can be represented by a single state. So let's begin. I have already logged in into thermofluids.net site. As is, now, let's go to test calcs and find a suitable test step. Obviously, uh, we are doing a system analysis. And as we travel through a uh, closed system, generic, uniform system, that's where we can, we can launch the test step by selecting the ideal model here. The model that is necessary for steam is obviously PC model, the phase change model, because there's a possibility of steam going from one phase to another. We click the HTML5 button here, and that launches the test step. First thing is to select the working fluid. H2 is already selected. And state one is our beginning state, let's assume. And what are known is that it contains 20 kg of steam and the volume is 10 meter cube. Also given are uh, the, the pressure inside the tank, 100 kPa. So notice that we know pressure, one thermodynamic property and mass and volume will produce specific volume. So that should be sufficient to calculate all the thermodynamic property. So we click the calculate button to get state one. Uh, for state two, uh, what do we know? Well, for sure, the mass is not changing. It's a closed system and it's a rigid tank. Therefore, the volume is not changing. Okay, so these two will only go that far. Give us one thermodynamic property, specific volume. We need one more. But what is given? That it, lose, it loses heat to the surroundings at 30 degree and the temperature also becomes the same as surrounding temperature at the end of the process. So we enter, the T, enter T2 as 30 degrees Celsius and that completes the calculation of the state. If you go to the IO panel, uh, well, before going there, in the graphics panel it shows that state one and state two, where do they stand with respect to the phase diagram. Well, now, now that the anchor states are calculated, let's calculate the heat transfer. Notice that the energy equation simplifies in this case because there is no external work transfer. There is no boundary work, nor there is any other types of work such as shaft or electrical work. So these are, this being absent, the energy equation becomes very simple. Here, Q has a sign built in, but if we want to solve the problem without involving sign, let's, let's enter uh, a new variable name. Let's say Q loss is an absolute quantity, how much heat is being lost. And we can write down that to be M1, which doesn't change, uh, times E1, the initial energy minus final energy. So this should give us exactly how much amount of heat is lost. Q loss is calculated in the output area, 17.44 million joules. This, these are by default in SI units, so kilojoules is the answer. But you can see it's a big quantity. So in million joules, it's 17.447 million joules. If the question is find the heat transfer rather than heat loss, the answer will be negative 17.44 because then you have to stick in a sign in front of the uh, heat loss quantity. Now regarding the entropy generation, let's split it up so that we understand how entropy is generated. Look at the balance equation. The first one is how much entropy is gained by the system essentially and second one is how much of that how much entropy entered with heat plus how much is generated 
in our problem heat is lost so entropy is carried out by the heat but entropy generation is always positive that's the second law of thermodynamics so let's break this up into a number of terms to find out the entropy generation so let's say how much heat is lost by heat so uh, let's call it s loss the answer will be what we already calculated q loss with heat loss and you're going to divide by the boundary temperature, which is 30 degrees Celsius, that's the environmental temperature, but it better be in Kelvin because that's what the formula says. The entropy carried by heat is given by Q, Q divided by Tb. When you press the enter your calculate button, it is calculated. So 57.5 amount kilojoule per Kelvin of heat is being, uh, of entropy is getting lost. Let's now calculate how much entropy decrease occurs as the fluid goes through this process? So I'm calling it S decrease must be the initial entropy minus final entropy multiplied by the mass. So entropy decreased by 50, about 50, and entropy was lost by 57. Obviously, if there was no generation, these two terms should be equal. So how much is the generation then? The difference between the two. That's what the equation is all about, which involves the sign, but here we're doing physically. So what is how much is S gen in that case? It is S loss due to heat minus S decrease. And the answer is 7. Uh, as you can see, the answer is uh, 7 kilojoule per Kelvin. So even though we have done it physically, you can reconcile this. If you go look at the equation, you can see that we are doing the same thing. In the, in the governing equation, in the entropy balance equation, all these quantities are algebraic, whereas here in the I.O. panel, we have used only... Uh, absolute values now just a quick note suppose we knew we calculated the death state uh, of this of the system which is when the system comes to environmental conditions so uh, let's say uh, environmental condition is what 100 kpa and, and let's say 30 degrees celsius so in that case you know, under that situation, if you go back to the state 1 and 2, you'll notice that all the exergies have been calculated. We are interested in exergy stored in the system, suppose. And notice that the initial exergy and final exergy are very different. So if the question is how much exergy has been lost because of that heat loss, we already calculated how much heat has been lost, 17.44. The exergy loss is... Uh, M1 star phi 1 minus phi 2. These are the store phi is the stored exergy, which means the useful, useful work that can be useful energy that can be delivered by the system. So notice that even though we lost 17 million joules, we really lost 2.11 million joules of exergy. So so this can be so so knowing the dead state we can do much more sophisticated analysis involving an exergy, which is covered in chapter six in your textbook.